Hello, um, you may have noticed that I really love the 20s um, and if you haven't, I do. Uh, I read quite a few biographies of women from the 20s era and uh, the first one that I will tell you all about is Agatha Christie and the 11 Missing Days which is, I think this is important, the revised and expanded 2011 edition by Jared Cade. Um, this is, of course, all about the 11 days that Agatha Christie went missing for. Uh, no one quite knows 100% what happened because she never spoke of it again. But basically, she found out that her husband was being unfaithful. So um, she, they found her car in, I think, I'm not sure if it was the actually some woods or uh, just a very sort of natural area and uh, she was missing for 11 days because uh, they say that she knew that he was going to be with his mistress for that weekend and it ruined his time there that's one theory another theory is that she w went into like a fugue state of like some sort of breakdown almost and didn't quite know um you know what was going on and basically she was found in a hotel and um the, the papers went mad uh i don't think she or anyone expected the furore that surrounded it and it really made her famous it's what made her a household name basically um the first half of this book i loved i I'm so nosy and I wanted to know all about it and it was um, that was all about the disappearance and it was very detailed and I do recommend it for that half it was great the second half is more of a general biography which is interesting but it then kind of slopes off into the troubles that the biographer had with documenting the story when the Christie's are so secretive and I don't really want to know. I'm not gonna be a biographer of the Christie's. I'm not that fast. I'm sure some people will be very interested in, but I just wanted to know about the disappearance. And um, like most people think, uh, the uh, biographer, is it Jared? Jared, yeah. He also believes that um, it was like a plan of hers that got out of hand because she didn't realise how much the uh, search was going to cost and she was too embarrassed to, to kind of admit so she went along with the fugue state theory. Uh, so yeah, no, I do, I do recommend it for the first half because the first half is great. I did really enjoy it, um, but not so much the second. One thing that did strike me as really heartbreaking actually is how no one in her family really seemed to understand her. I kind of know what it's like to be, to take a long time to grow up perhaps and uh, be on the immature side, um, but her daughter doesn't seem to cut her any slack. A lot of the quotes from her daughter are, are really quite mean and it made me feel sad for her. So. I'm going to read a bunch of Agatha Christie because I want to take the approach of common uh, criticisms of her and whether I personally think they stand up. So I'm looking forward to it because I always enjoy the adaptations. Um, next one. I am such a huge fan of Dorothy Parker. Um, and this is The Late Mrs. Dorothy Parker by Leslie Frewin. I've also got uh, the complete... I think it's the complete stories of Dorothy Parker and it's got every short story of hers in and her poetry is amazing as well. Um, you really get a sense of uh, being in an era like going out on the town in New York when you read Dorothy Parker and this, this is a really enjoyable book. It tells you, um, it goes into good description about the Algonquin Round Table which is a particular interest of mine, you know. And I know if I met Dorothy Parker, I would probably think, God, what a bitch. <laughs> um, and yet, there's something 
about her, I mean, she was very funny, but also I feel she was actually, well, I mean, she was very vulnerable. She had many suicide attempts and I kind of r relate to her a lot because of what she went through in relationships and, you know, particularly picking the wrong men and going through quite a traumatic experience with one. And um, the, uh, so I've, I feel like, it, it was a front, obviously, and I, you know, many of us put on a front when we feel vulnerable. Um, so I did relate to her a lot because I felt like the things that she did and went through were very similar to things that I went through. So I can, I can appreciate that. And yeah, this this was really good. I enjoyed it. Um, I also meant to. I also meant to read the diary of, oh God, it's not Agatha Christie. Who's the, you know, the British one. I can't believe I forgot her name. It's the, the, the stream of consciousness lady. Oh my God. I'll remember it before the end. Um, next is the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas, which isn't by Alice B. Toklas. It's by Gertrude Stein. Um, who was the lover of Alice B. Toklas and they were Americans in Paris or Gertrude Stein was an American in Paris and she wrote all about her legendary salon in which they were visited by Picasso, Hemingway, uh, Fitzgerald at one point, um, God so many you can't even think of all of them. And the front cover is the famous painting by Picasso. And yeah, it's, um, it's, I did enjoy it. It's um, not an easy read, I find, because a lot of it is quite stream of consciousness, but it's almost like falling into her dream. Um, so if you're, because it's very much of the style of stream of consciousness and oh, that lady, Virginia Woolf. Oh my God, that's her. Um, yeah, Virginia Woolf kind of stream of consciousness sort of thing. Um, so if you're, I mean, it's not as much as her, but if you're okay with that, then you will enjoy it. Because God, it, it, everyone is in it and it's fascinating, fascinating era. And also I've got a couple of graphic novels by Cattell and Bokeh. That's Cattell, C-A-T-E-L and Bokeh, B-O-C-Q-U-E-T. And together they worked on, um, I think they're doing a lot of the legendary Parisian women from the 20s. One of them being about Josephine Baker. And the other I got about Kiki de Montparnasse, who was uh, famous for being the life model. Again, I was a life model, so I found that exciting. Um, the life model of, uh, well, pretty much everyone who was everyone um, artistic in Paris at the time. And she had quite a tumultuous relationship with Man Ray and all the surrealists and the cubists and the ists of the era. And it's, uh, I think the Josephine Baker one is it feels very rich, it feels very detailed. I mean, they both are, don't get me wrong, and the art is lovely, I love the art, and both of them are really enjoyable. But for some reason, the Kiki de Montparnasse one felt much more like an overview than the Josephine Baker one did. I can't really explain why. Sorry, I'm pitting. But um, they're both brilliantly researched and apparently managed to fit everything in. But somehow the Josephine Baker story just felt a lot fuller. Maybe it, uh, oh, I don't know why that would be. It just did. Um, so I, rec I recommend both of them definitely, but I think with Kiki de Montparnasse, um, what I have done is I've got her autobiography, which was released in 1929. So it's going to focus on all of the times that I'm interested in the stuff that I love. Um, but somehow, with because Josephine Baker obviously is such an icon of the era, um, if you think 20s Paris, you think Josephine Baker, you know, her dancing, and they somehow managed to capture the movement. 
uh, which is impressive in 2D. Um, so those are 1920s ladies. Um, also, I, I read, but it was a long time ago, so I don't want to talk about it here. Um, a biography on um, Fitzgerald's wife, Zelda Fitzgerald, by Nancy Meaden, and that's so sad. It's really sad because she was schizophrenic, um, but also I feel that from what I can remember, um, she uh, had a lot of her, um, oh God, it's an insect, had a lot of her ambition thwarted by Fitzgerald as well. Um, she was a good dancer and she did actually get a place on with a dance um, a dance group, a professional one, but he basically guilt-tripped her into not going. And also she was the one who wrote about the era, you know, she her diary was um, very good. She could have um, had it published, but he didn't allow it. He basically stopped her from doing that as well and said, I'm the writer, you're just copying me when, you know, why can't both of them be writers? It makes no sense. I just found it really heartbreaking, uh, really sad. Um, so yeah, that's all the 20s things. Um, what I'm going to do is put links to everything down in the description. So um, I'll put um, a documentary on Josephine Baker, a Dada or surrealist film with Kiki de Montparnasse and anything else that I can find will be in the description. So if you want to see more of those ladies, do have a look. Okay, bye.